Okay, everybody. This is Scott Bader. What do we got today? Today is uh, Thursday, the 30th of November. It's high noon. It's like we call it out in the West. Uh, I don't know if anybody can see me, but that sun's blaring. It was nine degrees this morning out in the desert when I came in. And uh, right now it's probably about thir about 45, I'd say, and the sun sure is nice. But uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit about mining today. Let me put this hat on, keep the sun out of my face. Okay, I'm gonna take you around my little area here. I call it mom's place. I call it that because I had my mother up here with my father a year ago. Actually this year in about uh, March. And uh, we had a little picnic out here and I showed them how to mine. And my mom read a bunch of magazines and ate a lot of cereal and snacks and took some pictures with me. And that's why I named it Mom's Place. This place produced me already about two ounces of gold. And uh, I hope nobody else finds me up here, but one guy did. Absolutely, his name was Bill. It was about 110 degrees out here one day. And uh, lo and behold, he shows up. Didn't know it was me, found me. So I, I let him in on the area. And uh, we're gonna keep it quiet for as long as we can. Kind of partners on it, I guess. But it produces some real good gold. Gold. Oh, we got something, something crawling on me. Oh, 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 shit. oh, whoa. Oh, hold on, hold on. Wow, you gotta be careful. I don't know if you see what I got here. This is related to the dinosaur. Uh, you gotta be careful with these things. They, they attack, and they're slippery. I see this guy out here a lot. And uh, they're not venomous, but boy, they can, I don't know if you can see that, they can, uh, Sure bite. I mean, look at look at the teeth. Look at oh, look at the teeth. The, oh. oh, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. That didn't hurt at all. Oh. oh. Okay. Okay. You just you, you kind of rub them on the back there. Yeah, you settle them down, and they actually they actually become friendly and they like body heat so oh god this will uh, tell you what let's just put him in my pocket for a while and we'll deal with him later okay let me take you around this place this is uh once again this is called mom's place so here we go my finger hurts Okay. Okay, what do we got here? Well, let me. Darn lizard won't quit moving around. Okay. Well, let's go take a walk down there. We'll do a little panoramic first. You know, okay, there's my truck. Usually in the summertime, or when it starts getting really nice and warm, we got tons of things out tents tables booze lanterns tiki torches everything to make the comforts of home out in the desert there's some mountain ranges beyond that mountain range there is the Grand Canyon the Grand Canyon and behind that mountain range is the Colorado River that runs through the Grand Canyon. Now those hills over there, I've been up those hills uh, looking for gold. It took me exactly, well, pinpoint it. Let's zoom in. Okay. Right there. There's a arroyo, which is also known as a gulch or a gully that runs down there and there's tons of quartz. It took me three hours to hike all my stuff up there. And I worked for two and a half hours and I got skunked. So where you think there's gold and it's gonna be great, uh, 
don't count on it. Okay, let's take another view over here. It's beautiful today. I've been out here when it snows. Okay, we're just taking a view. It's a beautiful desert. Lots of Joshua trees. Okay, now let's go down and I'll show you where I make all my money. Yeah, right. So let's go. Okay, excuse my panting. I just got done shoveling a bunch of buckets. Okay, let me show you the uh, setup I got here. First, what we got is a bunch of buckets. Okay, but before the buckets, we need a place to dig. So I'm in an arroyo, otherwise known as a gulch or a wash. And uh, everything comes off these hillsides, okay, from the natural slope. And over millions of years, it all runs down into this gully. This could have been a really high mountain but for 300 million years it possibly has eroded and it was full of quartz and quartz contains gold and it broke free and it got weathered and cold and cracked and lays in here and when the rains come it washes it down spreads it around breaks it up some more okay so what we're going to do is here's the dry washer Okay, we're not going to run it right now because the camera will get awful dusty. So you start out with a dry, dry washer. This is a duster, gold duster. Beautiful machine. Okay, you got a hose that goes to a leaf blower. That leaf blower turns about 10,000 RPMs and it blows air through this hose up into the bottom of the dry washer and it rotates a fan. The fan has a counterweight on it which causes the machine to vibrate and along with the cloth that is sitting on top let's see if we can get a picture, well there's some of the cloth right back there the cloth blows out air, blows out the loose stuff into the air along with the shaking and vibration from the uh, fan with the counterweight on it all the light stuff walks off and blows off and all the heavy gold sits right behind these riffles right here. Right where these rocks are, there's gold under those rocks. Okay, now, the tools of the trade to make this work is a hoe. Okay, then you have the pitchfork. Oh, not pitchfork, dummy. I'm not in Gwen's farm. I ain't shoveling hay. That is a rock pick, okay? You swing that and break up the ground. Then we got a potato fork type of hoe, and we work that through the material, and we can remove some of the big rocks. Oops, my shadow's ruining this. And then obviously, we have a broom, so we can sweep up. Of course we gotta sweep up. Then we got the shovel, and then, oh, there's another hoe. That's a bigger one. That's for the heavy duty moving. Then we have the vacuum right here. There's a motor mounted on a bucket, and there's a hole right there. And that's where the hose goes in, just like if you were vacuuming your car at a car wash. I stick that hose in there. It's about eight feet long. And uh, I vacuum up, uh, like right there. See, now that's just been swept, okay? I have not vacuumed that yet, but I will before I leave here because there's a lot of gold hiding, like right in those little crevices, right in there, it hides in there. And boy, you'd be surprised what you get out of there. Amazing, you can see I got me a nice little hole going here, okay? I'm trying to work my way through here to 
the other side here, this is where Bill's working. Doggone guy caught me out here and I have to cut him in. Okay, so that's a nice shadow. Let's turn back around. We'll see the buckets again. And what I do is I break all that stuff loose with a pick and then I pickle fork it and uh, hoe it up and uh, shovel into these buckets and then I carry these buckets over to this ladder and I lift them up onto this ladder and set them on the paint lip and then I tip it over and feed the machine and I usually do 11 buckets at a time it takes me about uh, 40 minutes and it's nice just to stand there and feed it without having to constantly shovel 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 bend squat shovel full after shovel full could be 5,000 times I stick a shovel in the ground now I made it much easier this ladder is absolutely the best okay once again the buckets the tools of the trade right there I've already wore one of those out that's my first one there that pickle forks coming really handy and of course the shovel I have three shovels yeah, I just gotta have spares. Okay, let's uh, reposition myself and I'll take some more footage in a couple minutes. Okay, here we are again. That little lizard gets around. Okay, we're gonna go check out my friend Joshua. Now Joshua, he's out here all the time. You see, he's tall. He's going to demonstrate some of the things you wear when you're out mining. Now, how you doing, Joshua? Now, you can tell that he's got a cowboy hat on, which is very, very useful to keep the sun out of your face. You kind of bend it down on the back, keep it out of your neck. Okay. And then you got the sunglasses. You must, you must have sunglasses. You can go blind out here. It's brutal. Plus, when you're chipping rock, uh, he's got he's got kind of a bad complexion. Okay, and then a dust mask. You gotta have a dust mask. I got real sick out here. I was sick for two solid months, and I had to go to the doctor. Finally, and I had I had a bronchitis and laryngitis. I guess there's something in the dirt out here, the dust that can actually cause you harm. As you can see, Joshua is uh, wearing the mask. And I'm gonna have to ask for that back because he forgot it. That's my mask and those are my sunglasses. And that's my hat, Joshua. So uh, don't get too accustomed to it. But all in all, he's a good guy. He uh, likes to drink. And uh, he likes uh, listening to Howard Stern. And he's, now he's starting to like country music. He used to be a rapper. And uh, he thinks he's cool hiding behind my shades. But we really know what kind of guy you are. Just quit acting like you're on camera. This isn't Hollywood. Okay. Oh, that sun's bright. I wish I had my hat and my sunglasses. But I'm taking a, a little bit of footage with me and uh, Joshua. I don't know if you can see him back there. Yeah, he thinks he's Hollywood now. And uh, as you can see, I got my little friend with me. Tell you what, I haven't had lunch yet, so it tastes like chicken. I don't know, that's what they tell me. Okay, well, let's, go, uh, let's go see if we can find something else to show you. Okay, we're just going to show you where I started. I started this uh, about December of 2005. Oh, sorry, I got cut off. About December of 2005, when I did my famous hike up the hill and got skunked, I was really upset. 
and I was meeting somebody out here and uh, I packed up and I drove out here I seen this road and I took it and I took this road and I seen some guys up here two of them and uh, they were working way up to the uh, west way up yonder there and they didn't do good at all so they gave up and I tried it up there and it sucked and then we walked around a little bit I mean this guy named Randy and uh, I put the shovel in right here and lo and behold it looked good so I started here worked myself all the way down to there and that is uh, quite a feat for using a pick and a shovel okay you can see how wide it is and we just worked across and across and across and across and finally I am where I am today over here you see them rocks on that ladder that's counterbalance that's the one I put that bucket up there and the thing sinks in a little bit to the sand it won't tip over okay Let's see if I can scare up some jackrabbits see these things right here these are called barrel cactus I gotta tell you don't ever ever sit on one or walk into one they are sharp man brutally sharp and if you steal one good luck because if you get caught you're in a heck of a lot of trouble okay here's just another shot of surrounding area tell you the desert is beautiful it's amazing what you can find out here wildlife the partridge are incredible I uh, don't shoot them but they just come in big cubbies of them and in the summertime the bees because you bring water out here the bees are everywhere on you man just incredible. Here you can get a little idea. This a little bit of the steep area here, kind of like on top. Everything washes coming down the side here. Goes down into the wash. Works its way down millions of years. And there's where I am. Grabbing it all. Okay. There's helicopters that fly over here every now and then. They're taking tourists to see the Grand Canyon. And uh, occasionally I'll moon them uh, just to give the tourists something to talk about. I mean, they're sitting around the dinner table. They might talk about that white butt they seen as opposed to the Grand Canyon. Oh, a uh, lizard wanted to show you something. He, uh, he likes the comforts of home, too. And he just wanted me to tell everybody that, uh, be sure to bring toilet paper. He's capable of using a roll himself on a weekend. Okay. And, uh, tools are a must. Absolutely bring extra bearings for the dry washer fan and things to fix my motor with. And there's a battery jump starter and a couple gallons of 10 gallons of water. And boy, you just got to be prepared when you're out here. But the lizard just wanted me to show you that you must bring toilet paper because cactuses are very uncomfortable. Rocks don't work. And uh, be sure to cover up when you're uh, done. Okay, lizard? Let's get back to work. Okay, here we are at Hoover Dam. I'm on my way home. The trip for the weekend is over. I had a great time. I did spend two nights in the motel. 
There's no camping out in a tent. But I'm going to give you some pictures now of Hoover Dam. Um, and I'll actually shoot up in the mountains and show you where they're building the new bypass, which is going to be done in like four years. So let's go for a little tour. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this, but there's Hoover Dam. Let's get a little bit of a draw in here. Okay, there you can see the traffic. That's where they're building the bypass. This tra traffic is incredibly slow. It backs up. Let's follow these cars. Okay, then they go back up there, and then they wind around, and they go up there, and then they go up there, they go everywhere. See, there's the channel leading up to Lake Mead. There's the boat in that channel. Goes right there, close to. Tops of those two things are the intakes. Where they suck the water through the bottom of the channel, goes through the turbines, and then generates electricity. See the white ring around the mountains. That's how low the lake has become. Let's see if we can get a some cable equipment to haul things across the span. Let's see if we can get a closer look. Well, there's where they're building the new span. Right there is where they're at right now, right in that mountain range. So you can get a look at that. Let's zoom out a little bit. Right in that mountain range. Isn't that incredible? It's a modern engineering feat. There's the dam again. Back out of that channel, face over dam. Once again, there's the new area they're building. And we'll give you a little shot of some water. some water going through the canyon. And that bridge is going to come right over, tie in somewhere right there. end of this trip. Adios. Okay, I guess I still got three minutes left. Oh, whose truck is that? Uh, gee, that's mine. Let's get another panoramic view of the dam site. I don't want to put anybody to sleep here. stuff over. In the old days this thing was built by men hanging on wires, chiseling and chipping away. Okay. So 
enough of that already. Okay, now can I go home? For God's sakes. One more look. Let me get the picture for once. There we go. All right. It's gonna go. Uh, it's gonna go right to the video stores. See that? Ciao.